What's going on everybody? This is Mark Tomati here. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you basically how the gradient mesh tool is supposed to be used, started out and set up because there is a right and wrong way of using gradient mesh. And if you're really interested in learning how to use the tool and use it successfully, this is an essential rule and tip that you must follow basically on every single mesh that you start and create and draw and color. So on the screen, I kind of just drew this candy cane shape. I just pulled an image in Google and just quickly just did the shape it doesn't have to be perfect but what I wanted to get out of this is that this is hand drawn with the pen tool so if you're watching this video and you're a really a beginner and don't even know the pen tool I suggest go watch a tutorial on the pen tool before you do this but I drew this out with the pen tool by hand so the reason I made this shape is this will allow me to show you how not to use the gradient mesh so if you're drawing uh, whatever you know it doesn't matter what shape it could be a crazy curl it could be an s it could be a zigzag it doesn't matter what shape you're drawing if you hand draw that shape with the pen tool or you know you pathfinder a bunch of shapes together whatever the case may be you're probably going to have issues like this usually you would start out with white so you know what let's just bring it out of the artboard here just so we could see what's going on and if i were to hit and try and start a gradient mesh on this shape right look what happens see these funky lines look this is a completely broken line this makes no sense right here and what gradient mesh is supposed to do is follow the path perfectly along the center along this candy cane, right? It's supposed to go through the center like a perfect spine. And what's happening in front of me is not that, is this is gonna create problems. Let's fill in the color to show you what actually happens when you draw a gradient mesh like this. So let's fill in this color with whatever, yellow, right? And look what's happening already. And with the white, that is clearly not smooth. That's clearly not what gradient mesh is supposed to look like. Let's just color all these points, this green. Look at that, not all right. I mean, it's cool in itself, I guess, but not what we're trying to do, incorrect. I'm gonna show you how to draw a candy cane shape or any other shape really with the gradient mesh. So you're gonna start out with a square, right? We're gonna take a square and we're gonna make it white. And you can take the circle tool, but I have found trouble with the circle tool. So I will usually just go with a square always now, pretty much, unless I'm really just drawing a perfect circle. So the reason we made a shape in the first place is that shapes, when you make them, I'm gonna just show you other shapes too, so I can get my point across. If I make whatever shape from this tool, we could see that each shape has a center point, has a center point, has a center point. And that's important because this shape if I didn't add this mesh, it would not have a center point. It would just be hollow. It would have nothing in the middle, no center point or anything. So these center points contain structure in the shape. And that's very, very important. That's the key factor. So in order to make this candy cane shape with gradient mesh, we're going to hit the center point with the gradient mesh tool to start our mesh. And we're going to make a new layer and we're going to take this and put it on the new layer. So if you want a quick way to do it, instead of copying and pasting it over to the new layer, when you click whatever shape, you take this little square and you just drag it up to the new layer. So now we can see that this is on its own layer. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to control click the eyeball on that layer now. And now we have just bones, right? We could see through the white because this is filled with white right now, but we don't see it. And that's what we want. So the idea here is that we're gonna manipulate this square and shape it into this candy cane shape. We have to understand a few concepts about Bezier curves and how they work. And the idea of this gradient mesh square is we need to weld this, kind of like morph this into the shape of the candy cane um, by moving these points and also by adding the least amount of points needed. So I'm just gonna make a circle really quick just to kind of get the idea across here. In order to create this bend, this full kind of like, imagine this was the top of the candy cane, right? This circle, this top half. So in order to get around this bend perfectly as a perfect circle, we need a point on the left and the right, obviously, but we also need this one at the top. So think about it like this. We need a point at the left and the right of the candy cane, but we also need one at the top. And we also need one at our edges. We need our two bottom corners and our top two corners with that concept in mind and we're going to make sure we're being conscious of our bezier curves here and we're going to be compressing them and you should be using the carrot too the carrot is going to make this process a lot easier and we can see that our bottom middle stays at the bottom center our bottom left stays at the bottom left and our bottom right stays at the bottom right as you can see there that's going to be the start of our mesh
All right, so right away we can notice that there's a problem here. We don't have a natural roundness to this square, nor do we have any points over here yet. So realistically, if this mesh was complete right now, these three points right here at the top of this mesh would be these three points over here. And if I move those over there now, we're gonna have a huge issue, right? We can't really make this mesh look like a candy cane as is, but what we can do is start to morph, right? We could start to morph this entire shape into the, the shape that we need it to be. And by doing that, we need to add more points. We have to think about this, right? We don't need any points to define this straight part right here, but we need a point here, we need a point here, and we need a point here, right? So these points are gonna be my starting of the curve. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a line that's gonna be at the top of the curve, which is my line that I just added. So let me just adjust these points now. So you just have to make sure that the center line, right? The center line is always gonna move across the center of the candy cane. Take our carrot here and start adjusting our curves to follow the paths that they're supposed to be following the entire way through, right? And we're gonna just be fixing our curves here just to make sure that the color is gonna blend correctly in all directions. All right, so now we need a point set up over here because I'm just actually gonna straighten out these guys a little bit so I can see what's going on. And I need to add a point right on this line and I'm gonna bring this left edge. We need to make sure the left edge points stay on the left edge. Bring it over here. Find my center point and find my right edge, right? And actually these guys gotta invert. I have it backwards right now. Just like that. And that's pretty much our candy cane shape. So that's pretty much it everybody. And you could see now this mesh, let's unlock this. Look at that, this mesh, hand drawing the candy cane shape with the pen tool and then adding a dot in the middle. That's what happens. You can see the lines are all messed up and the colors are just not smooth. And this is what happens when you do it the correct way. You can see a very organized structure here. So if I were to just show some color and let me start adding some just red and white tones here. And that really is the only thing you need to know about starting out a gradient mesh shape. And from there, it's pretty much the same process. You keep adding points to manipulate the shapes that you need to create. You need to find out what points need to be where. And you always start out with a square or a circle. I definitely recommend square over the circle though, because sometimes the circle adds extra points you don't want on the edges. Um, it's weird, I know, but definitely I think square might be a better route to go and then you just round the edges manually. So thank you everybody for watching this tutorial. I hope I educated you somehow. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Mark Dometta. You can find me on Instagram at MarkDarts. I'll see you on the next one, everybody. Mm -hmm.